Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Hogwarts. I am the only one who is a cultivator. Chapter 16. Principal Dumbledore, can I, touch, these ghosts? Looking at the transparent ghosts emerging from the pile of food, Yi Feng's eyes were filled with excitement instead of fear. This was not the first time that Yi Feng had seen the soul. He had seen the real soul one month after he officially entered the path of cultivating immortality and gained his first ray of immortal power. Yi Feng still remembered that when he cultivated the first ray of immortal power and obtained the spiritual enlightenment method, he couldn't wait to open his eyes but saw nothing. However, only a month later, he saw a man standing on the side of the road on the way home from school without any warning, the picture of looking longingly at the illusory figure in a certain direction. However, whether it was the accidental encounter, or the fact that he gradually became bolder later on, he deliberately went to the houses where old people died and carefully studied them, but he could not find out where those souls ended up, and none of them stayed for more than a day, time, and will not appear again after disappearing. Therefore, Yi Feng was very excited when he knew that there was Hogwarts in this world. After all, there was not only magic here, but also a variety of magical items, and even ghosts that he could not find any trace of. Perhaps these ghosts in Hogwarts can give me a satisfactory answer, so. Snapped. Just when the ghost that emerged from under the table was halfway out and about to fly away, a yellow talisman was slapped on his body. This made the ghost who had succeeded in the prank and was about to leave with a smile on his face suddenly freeze. Living. A. Hey, Yi Feng, why can you meet these ghosts? And what is that thing you slapped on him? Hermione, who was full of curiosity, stretched out her white hands to uncover the talisman affixed to the ghosts as she spoke. Paper can also be said to be a talisman. Don't want. Ah. Bump. Yi Feng. Katakana middle dot underscore katakana middle dot no. Before Yi Feng could say the word, touch, the talisman was taken off by Hermione, and the moment the talisman was taken off, a piercing scream suddenly sounded, and the ghost who was almost frightened to death by the talisman screamed. Disappeared into the ceiling at an extremely fast speed. Hermione, hollow square, yes, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have touched your things without your consent, but it's actually very rude to use such things to immobilize Mr. Ghost. Hermione's voice became lower and lower after speaking, and the little head also slowly lowered. Seeing this, Yi Feng sighed slightly and comforted, it's okay, I didn't tell you clearly in advance. And you're right, I was too excited and used the talisman to kill Mr. Ghost without his consent. Stay still, I'll go apologize to Mr. Ghost in a moment. Dumbledore, who had walked behind Yi Feng and his eyes became extremely solemn, flashed with relief when he heard Yi Feng's words, but he still said, Classmate Yi Feng, it's good that you have such an idea. This time I I forgive your recklessness, and I hope it won't happen again. Also, I will keep this fortune for you. Do you have any objections? Yi Feng said the word, talisman, directly in Chinese, so Dumbledore's accent was a little strange when he recited it. Yi Feng naturally had no objection to Dumbledore's suggestion. After all, although it was the ghost prank that really scared Ronald, and he had asked Dumbledore for permission before taking action, these ghosts were not fixed assets of Hogwarts, they also owned them. Self-aware living being. Therefore, Yi Feng's direct action of immobilizing people with talismans was indeed a bit excessive, but it was hard to say that there was any crime or anything like that. After all, he just immobilized the ghost, and he didn't have time to do anything. As for apologizing, Yi Feng glanced around, not to mention the ghosts who had been affixed with talismans by him just now, most of those who had not been affixed with talismans have now fled. Even one or two who are more courageous are currently floating high near the dome and far away from him. There is a posture of running away if the situation goes slightly wrong. Dumbledore also saw this situation, but he had nothing to do. After all, Yi Feng was only an 11-year-old child, so he couldn't say anything. He could only suggest that Yi Feng should not do such things in the future. Of course, after warning Yi Feng not to put talismans on ghosts in the academy at will, Dumbledore also asked the question he was most concerned about, which was where Yi Feng got this talisman that could immobilize ghosts. Faced with Dumbledore's question, Yi Feng only thought for a second and gave an almost standard answer. I bought this talisman from a Taoist temple near our home. It cost me half a month's pocket money. 
Hearing Yi Feng's answer, Dumbledore looked thoughtful. After all, that country is quite mysterious even in the magical world, so it is normal to have some similar magic props. After getting the answer he wanted, Dumbledore nodded and turned back. Seeing this, Yi Feng breathed a sigh of relief and became excited at the same time. Since the spirit binding talisman I drew myself can be used, doesn't it mean that other talismans can also be used? Yes, the talisman that immobilized the ghost just now was drawn by Yi Feng himself, but because he didn't have much pocket money, he could only buy a little yellow paper, cinnabar and the like, so even though he got it from the system there are many ways to draw talismans, but due to lack of materials for practice, he himself does not know whether the talismans he drew are useful. Of course, now that the most basic spirit binding talisman has been proven to be useful, there will naturally be no problem with other talismans. The only problem now is the materials for drawing talismans. After all, the drawing of talismans is not just yellow paper and cinnabar. Some talismans need to be added. Other things. Comma. Yi Feng, the ghost running around and playing pranks in the original drama, was no longer a problem, and without the ghost's pranks, the little wizards of the same class as Yi Feng could continue to enjoy their feast. After this incident, there was no more trouble. After eating and drinking, their prefect led them back to the lounge. On the stairs leading to the lounge, their prefect warned them that although this was the closest place to the lounge, it's a fast path, but the stairs here may move at any time, so be careful to remember the path you've taken and don't get lost. After a few minutes of guidance from the prefect, Yi Feng and the others successfully arrived in front of a painting of a fat woman. Is this the legendary fat lady? But I doubt that a painting can really stop the wizard. Although Yi Feng was a little doubtful of the strength of the painting, he never thought of trying it. And after the prefect read the command and led them into the common room, and after introducing various situations and precautions, they found their respective dormitories and beds and prepared to rest. Yi Feng was not assigned to the same dormitory as Harry and the others like the protagonists of those fan fictions. However, neither of them wanted to talk, so he fell asleep quickly. After all, classes would officially start tomorrow. As for Yi Feng, he is looking forward to tomorrow's class. After all, the first class is the transformation class. If his idea can really be realized, there may be more animagus in the magic world. The next morning, Yi Feng still opened his star-like eyes before the sun rose as always, and at this time, the others in the same dormitory were still sleeping soundly. After getting up, Yi Feng walked to the window and fed some meat to his little owl, which had all grown its needle feathers and was about to grow feathers. Then he went to wash up as usual. By the time Yi Feng finished washing, the sun was about to rise. It got up, but few people in Hogwarts still got up. Yi Feng is not someone who likes to disturb others, so after he got up, he did not intend to go out for his daily breath breathing. Instead, he gently opened the doors and windows. However, after opening the doors and windows, Yi Feng discovered something rather embarrassing, matter. Although Hogwarts is very large, the windows of the dormitories where students live will not be blocked, but the direction of the openings must be different. Unfortunately, the dormitory where Yi Feng lives opens in a direction that cannot be seen. On the sunny side. Ahem, this is a bit embarrassing. It seems. As he spoke, Yi Feng suddenly noticed that his dormitory happened to be on the top floor, which meant that he could actually go out from the window and climb to the top of the building. Although the buildings in Hogwarts are steeple-shaped, and the slopes are steep, it is generally impossible to climb up. But Yi Feng is not an ordinary person, so after a few seconds, Yi Feng stood on the towering spire. Superior. Suck. As the sun rose, Yi Feng opened his mouth slightly and took a long breath in front of the rising sun. As Yi Feng took this breath into his lungs, the purple light in his eyes flashed away. Waiting, the sun completely jumped out of the mountains, and Yi Feng immediately stopped breathing and closed his mouth. Gulu. As his throat moved slightly, Yi Feng used the method of swallowing purple energy to swallow the collected purple energy, and then let out a long breath. Of course, in order to avoid the last situation happening again this time, Yi Feng slowed down a little when he exhaled, so it looked like he was just exhaling a long white mist. At the same time, Dumbledore, who finally summoned Harry Potter to Hogwarts, stretched and opened the window to get some fresh air. Today's weather must be very. Dumbledore. Katakana middle dot underscore katakana middle dot. 
N airy summation opening parenthesis D no no. Yi Fong, Sigma, Su degree D degree winking face, Su. Headmaster Dumbledore, good morning. Yi Feng did not expect that Dumbledore would actually open the window at this time, nor did he expect that the roof of the house he was on was shorter than Dumbledore's, so the roof was just on the same level as the window of Dumbledore's room. He ran to the roof this was seen immediately. Of course, although it was a bit surprising, Yi Feng didn't think anything was wrong. After all, both immortal cultivators and wizards can fly. Yi Feng has been running to high places in recent years, so he didn't even realize that he was running. There was nothing wrong with going to the roof and he greeted Dumbledore cordially. Yi Feng didn't think anything was wrong, but Dumbledore opposite him was almost scared to death, because this was at a height of dozens of meters. If he fell, he could basically have an owl deliver a message to Yi Feng's parents for dinner. Dumbledore was frightened without any hesitation. He directly took out the wand in his hand and cast a levitating spell on Yi Feng. When Dumbledore took out the wand, the delicate sword pendant on Yi Feng's waist trembled slightly, but it stopped for a moment. After seeing Dumbledore taking out the wand, Yi Feng was about to reach out for the wand, but when Dumbledore after the magic was cast, Yi Feng stopped because he knew that Dumbledore had no ill intentions towards him. Sure enough, the moment Yi Feng was hit by Dumbledore's magic, he felt himself floating up uncontrollably. A look of surprise flashed in Dumbledore's eyes when he saw Yi Feng pulling out his wand. Because of this kind of reaction ability, other people's when it comes to young wizards, many adult wizards don't have them. Of course, appreciation is appreciation, but this kind of behavior of running to such a dangerous rooftop early in the morning to watch the sunrise is absolutely not allowed. So Dumbledore decided to make Yi Feng suffer a little, so he moved the hand holding the wand slightly. And as the wand moved, Yi Feng also floated and floated outside the roof. Anyone else would have been stunned by this scene, but Yi Feng, to put it bluntly, Dumbledore may not fly as many times as him, nor may he fly as fast or as high as him. Therefore, when Dumbledore used the levitation spell to float him to a height of tens of meters above the ground outside the roof, Yi Feng not only did not panic but said with a surprised look on his face, Principal Dumbledore, is this the levitation spell? It's so magical. If you can exert control over yourself, does that mean a wizard can fly without a broomstick? Dumbledore. Key back quote D. Is this why I use the levitation spell to make you fly? This is punishment. Punishment. Although Dumbledore was very crazy when facing Yi Feng's reaction, he could not say it directly. However, Yi Feng's behavior was absolutely not allowed, so Dumbledore directly pulled Yi Feng back and let him fly from the window. Arriving at his room. Although the school rules of Hogwarts do not explicitly prohibit little wizards from climbing to the top of the building, your behavior is too dangerous. If you want to watch the sunrise, I know a better place. Since there is no explicit prohibition in the Hogwarts school rules, I will not deduct points from Gryffindor this time but as a punishment, I will punish you to copy the Hogwarts school rules. Do you have any opinions on this decision? Quote. Although Dumbledore's words were not harsh, they were filled with an unquestionable meaning, and Dumbledore was indeed considering his safety, so Yi Feng accepted the punishment, but he soon regretted it. At first, Yi Feng thought that the school rules might be the ones Dumbledore had mentioned before, but when Dumbledore put the school rules in front of him, he knew that he was wrong, and he was very wrong. In the end, Yi Feng succeeded in copying the school rules before going to class with his strong hand speed since he was single. Unfortunately, he also missed the breakfast time, so he only had time to go to the kitchen to get some ingredients and hurried to class. When Yi Feng ran to the classroom, it wasn't class time yet, but there was already a gray and black cat squatting there on the podium. Yi Feng is not a cat lover, so he doesn't know much about cats. He doesn't know what kind of cat it is, but he can tell at a glance that this cat is the transformation of Vice Principal McGonagall. This makes his eyes suddenly light up, and he walks over quickly. Reach out and touch. Vice Principal McGonagall, key back quote D. Under the death gaze of Vice Principal McGonagall, Yi Feng had to retract his hand angrily. After all, Vice Principal McGonagall would change back in front of everyone. If he really touched McGonagall, whether the vice principal will die or not, he will definitely be beaten to death by vice principal McGonagall. Seeing Yi Feng retract his hand, vice principal McGonagall also breathed a sigh of relief. 
However, while she was relieved, she also had a doubt in her heart, whether Yi Feng recognized her. With regret in his heart, Yi Feng sat down in his seat, which was next to Hermione. However, what was different from the past was that Yi Feng just said hello to Hermione and then sat down and ignored her. Instead, he kept staring at the podium, on the cat. Hi. Seeing that Yi Feng ignored her, Hermione gently pushed Yi Feng. What are you thinking about? Why are you so lost in thought? I've called you several times. Sensing the slightly resentful tone of the people around him, Yi Feng quickly returned. I'm wondering if transfiguration can really make people turn into something. Plant an animal. When Yi Feng said this, he did not look back, but still stared at the cat on the stage, as if the black and white cat had some fatal attraction. This made Hermione a little bit disgusted, so she looked again he said, you seem to like cats very much. I like cats too, and I have one at home. It's called Crookshanks. Although Yi Feng was a novice in terms of emotions, he could still smell the faint smell of jealousy in Hermione's words, and just when he saw clearly the general principles of Animagus, he received a mission, so he looked away from Vice Principal McGonagall. I really like cats. They are elegant and calm, and their soft bodies are nice to touch. Unfortunately, the cats I had in the past were wild and not very clingy. Really, that's such a pity. When I go back this time, I can bring Crookshanks, and I think you will definitely like her. Seeing Yi Feng finally withdrawing his attention, Hermione also after returning to normal, at this time, two fiery figures rushed in from the door. Hermione couldn't help but shake her head when she saw these two figures. Although they were not good friends yet, they were still classmates who came together in the same carriage. They were more familiar with each other than the others, so Hermione couldn't bear it when she saw these two guys being late on the first day. Zhu shook his head. As for Yi Feng, he looked like he was watching a good show. Ronald and Harry, who rushed in, breathed a sigh of relief when they saw that no teacher had come over to the podium. Ronald complained out of habit, it's a good thing you're not late. Otherwise Professor McGonagall's face would be scary to death. As soon as Ronald finished speaking, the cat on the podium suddenly jumped down from the podium. While jumping down, the cat changed rapidly. Almost in the blink of an eye, the cat that had been squatting on the podium for a long time suddenly changed. Became Vice Principal McGonagall. Ronald. Sigma opening parenthesis DLLLL. The moment he saw the cat turned into Vice Principal McGonagall, Ronald opened his mouth in shock, but he was worthy of being a member of the Weasley family. He reacted almost instantly and looked at Vice Principal McGonagall and praised, it's really amazing. Ronald's reaction ability is very strong, but it is a pity that Vice Principal McGonagall does not accept this trick, and transfiguration is indeed very strict, because transfiguration is a magic that completely changes one thing into another thing. In other words, if you fail to study and do not remember certain key knowledge points, it is very likely that you will not be able to change back into another animal after using the transformation technique, so Professor McGonagall's tone is very stern. After scolding Harry and Ronald, Vice Principal McGonagall asked them to sit down. What made Yi Feng a little disappointed was that because the transfiguration class was more rigorous, Professor McGonagall did not teach them transfiguration in their first class. Instead, he gave them a lesson note. G.U. Almost as soon as Professor McGonagall announced the end of class, Yi Feng's stomach rumbling. This made Hermione and Ronald, who were sitting next to him, look over in confusion. Seeing this, Yi Feng smiled awkwardly and said, Morning when I got up, I met Principal Dumbledore, and he invited me to sit in his office for a while, so I didn't have time to have breakfast. You didn't have breakfast. Hermione was a little shocked when she heard Yi Feng's words, because when she got up, she heard his roommate said that Yi Feng had gotten up early, so she thought Yi Feng should have already had breakfast. I should leave some for you. The dessert this morning was quite delicious. Hermione's face was full of annoyance when she said this, while Neville lowered his head in guilt. Because Yi Feng was the best person to him in Hogwarts, but he didn't notice that Yi Feng didn't eat breakfast. Seeing that both of them felt a little guilty, Yi Feng smiled and said, it's okay. I already went to the kitchen to get something before I came here. You don't have to worry. Hermione and the others were immediately relieved after hearing Yi Feng's words. However, when they came to the potions classroom, 
they saw Yi Feng taking out his crucible that was slightly different from theirs and pouring water into the crucible. After that, they could not help but be shocked when the small flame under the crucible was turned into a large fire. Yi Feng, we heard that the potions teacher is very strict, especially the Gryffindor students, so. Boom. Before Ronald finished speaking, the classroom door was suddenly pushed open, and then a black figure rushed in and stood at the edge of the podium. So Mr. Weasley, what are you going to do? Gulu. Seeing the condescending Snape, Ronald couldn't help but swallowed hard when he was caught just saying bad things about others, but his reaction was still as quick as ever. So Professor Snape, I would like to advise Yi Feng not to adjust the heat of the crucible so high. This is very dangerous. Seeing that Ronald was scared, Snape took his eyes away from Ronald and prepared to see what Yi Feng was doing, but when his eyes moved towards Yi Feng, a figure wearing glasses completely attracted him. Gaze. After staring at Harry carefully, or to be precise, Harry's eyes for a second or two, Snape withdrew his gaze, walked to the podium, and began his opening remarks. Of course, after the opening remarks, Snape did not forget to note Ronald's offense against him, and directly deducted a full 10 points from Gryffindor. Without too much nonsense, Snape was in a better mood probably after deducting points for Gryffindor, so he started teaching Yi Feng and the others directly, and after explaining, he let them start brewing the potion. Of course, this magic potion made Yi Feng and the others familiar with the brewing process, so the process was very simple, at least for Yi Feng who had used a rice cooker to make elixirs. Therefore, it only took Yi Feng five minutes to boil and pack the potion that Snape had given him. However, Yi Feng did not stop after boiling the potion that Snape told him. He began to wash the pot skillfully, then added water, and increased the heat to maximum. On the stage, Snape looked at Yi Feng's skillful movements. Even though Yi Feng was a Gryffindor, he couldn't help but nod. It was just that the things Yi Feng added to it seemed a bit wrong with what he told him. What is an octagon? Oh, it turns out this thing really has eight anise. What an image. Cinnamon. Is this the skin of some animal? Huh, it's actually a piece of bark. Pepper. A type of pepper. But why is it a small black fruit? It's really strange, but it looks good. It's just a pity that there is no magic fluctuation. This pot of potion has failed. After a few minutes. Wait. Although I have never seen many of the previous materials, I can still understand them. But what does adding mutton mean? And, why is it so fragrant? Snape couldn't help but swallowed as he thought to himself. Gouda Gouda, there was a little bit of red soup in the crucible that was boiling. When Yi Feng put the thinly sliced mutton into the crucible, a rich meaty aroma wafted up. It was also at this time that Yi Feng took out the soup. He took out his wand. I forgot to bring my chopsticks, so just use this wand to get rid of it first. As he spoke, Yi Feng wiped his wand and then directly extended the wand into the crucible and opened the mutton placed inside. On the podium, Snape was extremely confused when he saw Yi Feng actually stirring the potion in the crucible with his wand and immediately became furious because potions is a subject he likes very much and he does not allow anyone to mess around in this class. Your name is Yi Feng, right? Can you tell me what you are doing? Hearing the sound, Yi Feng looked up and saw an unusually gloomy and scary face. Right next to him, Hermione, Harry and the others were frightened when they heard the sound and looked at it. Hermione even missed the crucible because she was closer. They were all knocked over. Laugh. The half-finished potion spilled from the overturned cauldron made a violent sizzling sound, and a black smoke rose directly. Snape was so frightened that he immediately took out his wand and used a small spell to directly turn the black smoke away. Dispelled. Seeing this, Snape, who was already angry, became even more angry. He stared at Yi Feng with fierce eyes and said to Hermione, I don't think you are suitable for potions class. Although Yi Feng has not watched the Harry Potter series of movies, he still knows some basic, knowledge points, so he used to have feelings for this old man who although he would target Hogwarts everywhere, he had been silently protecting Harry in secret. Not annoying. However, Yi Feng became angry when Snape said this. Although Yi Feng didn't know what criteria Snape used for evaluation, it was absolutely wrong to say in front of all the students that Hermione was not suitable for potions class just because she knocked over a cauldron, and even while being frightened. So, Yi Feng directly picked up the test tube that he had placed next to him. Professor Snape, 
I know you don't like us at Gryffindor College, but to say such hurtful words just because of a trivial matter, I don't think this is what a qualified teacher should do. Yi Feng said as he spoke. Test tube in hand. Seeing that Yi Feng actually dared to refute him, Snape was already angry and immediately started to scold Yi Feng. However, before he could say anything, he smelled a faint smell mixed with the aroma of meat, which made him he suddenly looked at the test tube in Yi Feng's hand. This is, a potion for curing scabies. In judging from the color and taste, the quality is pretty good. It's almost as good as my refining level. Looking at the potion in Yi Feng's hand, Snape was silent, because he had never seen a student who was so talented in potions. He had to admit that even he would never be able to follow the instructions in the book after hearing it only once. It is required to find the correct materials and add them in the correct order and quantity to cook it successfully. As for Yi Feng, not only did he successfully brew it, but the quality was also very good. It could even be said that the quality was even better than what some potions teachers brewed. At this moment, Snape was conflicted. He wanted to take back his words, because Yi Feng was indeed too good, but as a teacher, he couldn't save his face, especially since Yi Feng was still a Gryffindor, and he was still in front of Harry. Finally, Snape rolled down his sleeves, turned around and walked towards the podium and said angrily, Mr. Yi Feng, although you brewed a good quality potion, Gryffindor will still be deducted five points because you contradicted the teacher. Quote. Also, can you explain to me the potion of, magic potion, you are brewing now? I don't remember teaching you to add sliced mutton to the potion, and also use a wand to stir it. The reason why the wand works is because it is made of materials containing post-magical elements. To a certain extent, the materials used to make the wand can also be used to brew potions. Mr. Yi Feng, tell me, you used the wand to stir the brewing potion. Do you want to use the wand as an ingredient? Seeing that Snape had softened and stopped being aggressive, Yi Feng did not hold on and explained, Professor Snape, actually you misunderstood. I have already prepared the potion. The pot in front of me now is not potion, but my breakfast, and in our country we call it, hot pot. Snape, huh? After being silent for a while, Snape took a long breath and said calmly, In other words, you are using the crucible to cook food instead of brewing potions. Yes. Yi Feng's answer was very straightforward, because he had just finished copying the Hogwarts school rules, so he remembered very clearly that the school rules did not explicitly prohibit students from using crucibles for cooking, and he was not wrong. However, sometimes when teachers want to punish you, they don't need to know which school rule you broke. As long as they think you are wrong, they can reprimand you. That's what Snape did now. Good answer, 10 points from Gryffindor. Yi Feng, Katakana middle dot he katakana middle dot. Seeing that Snape actually picked up the quill to implement the deduction points, Yi Feng's head was full of question marks, because this was a bit beyond his expectation, and he didn't think he should be deducted for the 10 points, so he directly he opened his mouth to defend himself and said, Professor Snape, why do you want to deduct 10 points from Gryffindor? Why? Snape almost laughed angrily when he heard Yi Feng's words. Excuse me, Mr. Yi Feng, what class are you taking now? Potions class. Oh, are you cooking potion now? No, so I'm deducting Gryffindor points because of you. Is there a problem? Have. Snape. Asterisk. N airy summation opening parenthesis D no no. What? What did you say? You didn't brew potions but cooked food in potions class. What's wrong with me deducting your points? After hearing Snape's words, Yi Feng said solemnly and solemnly, Professor Snape, I just finished copying the Hogwarts school rules in Principal Dumbledore's office in the morning. I remember very clearly that there is no provision in the school rules that students cannot participate in potions class. Serve cooking food. As long as the law does not prohibit it, the fact that the school regulations do not clearly stipulate prohibited things proves that students can do it. Therefore, Professor Snape, there is nothing wrong with me cooking food in potions class, not to mention that I failed to eat breakfast. Dumbledore's fault. Yi Feng said the latter sentence a bit low, but he was the only one speaking in the classroom at the moment, so even though he lowered his voice, everyone in the classroom heard it. Seeing that Yi Feng had pulled Dumbledore out, if he continued to pester him, he believed that Yi Feng would definitely dare to pull Dumbledore out. In other words, he lost this, confrontation. 
Sit down, no points will be deducted from Gryffindor this time. Oh. As soon as Snape finished speaking, loud cheers rang out in the classroom, and Snape lowered his head slightly when he saw this scene and lowered his eyes slightly before saying, However, I will propose that Principal Dumbledore ban students from cooking with cauldrons in potions class as soon as possible. For food. After saying this, Snape glanced at Yi Feng and found that Yi Feng's eyes moved slightly and an idea flashed in his mind. Then the corners of his mouth twitched slightly and then he said, Oh, to add, it doesn't work without a crucible. Snape's proposal became a reality the next day. Dumbledore officially announced that students would not be allowed to use wands to stir potions in potions class, students would not be allowed to cook food in potions class, lower grade wizards would definitely not with these three new school rules, Yi Feng has become a legend in the school. A legend about a man who single-handedly added three school rules in one day. Because of a pot of hot pot, Yi Feng became a celebrity in Hogwarts overnight. As the famous troublemakers in Hogwarts, the Weasley twins, they directly found Yi Feng because they admired Yi Feng very much. Such, braveness, of the wind. As for Yi Feng, he was feeling uncomfortable about his hot pot crucible which was confiscated after being used only once, so he directly rejected the Weasley twins' invitation. After all, he had to replace it with a crucible made of the same material as the others. He didn't dare if he uses it for cooking again, he's afraid he won't grow any longer. The Weasley twins were a little sad to be rejected, because in their opinion, Yi Feng's potential in playing pranks is absolutely huge. If they can get him to join the team, their goal of dominating the entire Hogwarts will be one step closer. Yi Feng was not interested in pranks or anything like that. He was more interested in the Black Lake and the Forbidden Forest. Unfortunately, because of his previous, extraordinary behavior, Dumbledore looked at him more strictly, so he could only give up temporarily. The idea of finding out. Of course, hunting in the Forbidden Forest and fishing in the Black Lake are temporarily unavailable, but it is still possible to get up and exercise every morning. So, when the sun was about to rise the next day, Yi Feng left the dormitory after washing up all the way to the high tower next to the auditorium. Because the auditorium is relatively large, its roof is not a cone-shaped spire, but an arc-shaped roof like a cover. The slope will be much gentler. Although it will not be as gentle as flat ground, it will be enough to make people feel comfortable. Free to walk up there. Of course, these are not the most important. The most important thing is that there is no obstruction around here, so he can directly see the sunrise here. So, Yi Feng, who came to the roof of the auditorium, sat on the steering wheel facing the rising sun. Come down. Ding, congratulations to the host for successfully taking purple energy every day. Since the host has consumed purple energy for 3600 days in total, a set of heavenly fishing rods will be awarded as a special reward. The detailed usage method is for the host to explore on his own. Yi Feng. N airy summation opening parenthesis D note no. Yi Feng was shocked when he heard the system prompt. This is not the first time that Yi Feng has encountered this kind of reward for accumulated sign ins, so what scares Yi Feng is the reward, the fishing rod of the heavens. Anyone who has read the novel knows that those who are linked to the heavens generally cannot reach a lower level. After all, if the level is low, they cannot communicate with the heavens. More importantly, Yi Feng is worried that he does not have a good fishing rod for fishing. This the reward could be said to be delivered to Yi Feng's heart, so Yi Feng couldn't wait to take out the fishing rod. At the moment when he took out the fishing rods, dazzling light bloomed from the group of six fishing rods. Fortunately, Yi Feng had already experienced it and directly used his magical power to set up an area to block it. Otherwise, I am afraid that the daily profit would be there the next day. News like, a mysterious phenomenon occurred in Hogwarts yesterday, and it was suspected that Voldemort was attacked, will be reported. When the light slowly faded away, a group of fishing rods composed of six main colors of yellow, purple, green, blue, white and black appeared in Yi Feng's eyes, and when Yi Feng stretched out his hand to the fishing rod floating in the air, a fishing rod with the main color yellow automatically fell into his hands. When the yellow fishing rod fell into Yi Feng's hands, the information about the fishing rod also entered his mind. The function of this set of fishing rods is very simple. The levels increase from yellow, purple, cyan, blue, white and black. 
Yellow fishing rods can only be used for fishing in this world. Purple fishing rods are of the same type, that is, as long as they belong to Harry Potter. Fishing can be done anywhere in the world. The cyan fishing rod goes a step further, and the fishing range extends to the magical worlds, including the world with the Western gods. Blue corresponds to the world of martial arts, white represents immortals, and black covers the entire fantasy world. When this group of six fishing rods are combined into one, there is no one in the world who cannot fish. This set of fishing rods is really awesome, because no matter what world, even the lowest priced yellow fishing rod can directly catch the cause and effect, the flow of fate, but the scope is different, and the reason why the higher the level of the fishing rod is, it is because in addition to the latter world covers a wider area, which is also related to the fact that those worlds are further away from here. Of course, no matter how awesome this set of fishing rods is, there are prerequisites. After all, there is a saying in the fishing industry that, a poor student has more stationary. A good fishing rod may not necessarily catch fish, and the same is true for this set of fishing rods. To use this set of fishing rods, you need to input Shanley. The more Shanley you input, the higher the quality, the further the fishing line can be cast, and the sweeter the bait you release will be, so you can catch good things. The probability is higher. Now, the fairy yellow fishing rod owned by Yi Feng can basically be used normally, but the distance of the fishing line is too high. Yi Feng tried it with all his fairy power and found that he could probably fish in Hogwarts Academy, to Bluefin Tuna in the Atlantic Ocean. In other words, he couldn't even fully use the yellow fishing rod, and he couldn't even think about other things for the time being. Yi Feng probably figured out the function of the fishing rod, and his eyes almost narrowed with laughter. After all, he had been craving for all kinds of seafood in the Black Lake for several days, and with this fishing rod, he didn't have to worry about breaking it. The line ran out of fish. But it was not fishing time yet, so Yi Feng put away the fishing rod in his hand. After putting away the fishing rod in his hand, Yi Feng stood on the dome and took a posture. Then as the bright beat sounded, Yi Feng also moved with the wind on the dome. Hey Yi Feng, what are you doing? Practicing your magical Chinese Kung Fu. While Yi Feng was very involved in, practicing, a shout suddenly sounded from behind him. Hearing the sound, Yi Feng immediately stopped what he was doing and turned around to look along the sound. Then he saw two identical boys with flaming hair leaning half of their bodies out of the window at the rear, looking excited, looked at him. Seeing that it was Weasley who greeted him, Twin Leaf Feng smiled and nodded, yes, but we call this morning exercise. The set I just practiced is called the Rising Sun, which is also called Eagles Taking Flight. In addition, there is the advanced version of Youthful Vitality, which is also called Time's Calling, and the ultimate version, Dancing Youth or Letting Your Ideals Fly. How about it, do you want to learn? If you want to learn, I can teach you. Do you want to learn? I can teach you. Yi Feng's words kept ringing in the minds of the Weasley twins like a devil's whisper, so a few minutes later, two more people appeared on the dome, and the fast-paced beat the sound was also much louder. 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 2 2 3 4 5 6 stretching exercises 1 2 3 4 Ah, the air in the college today is as fresh and beautiful as ever. 5 or 6 full body exercises. 1 2 3 4 Before Dumbledore could finish speaking, a series of strange and very fast paced tapping sounds came into his ears, and when he looked in the direction of the sound to see what was going on, his whole body was filled with emotion. I was confused. Then, what is that? Wait, that seems to be, the Weasley twins and Yi Feng. Yi Feng, why did you run to the roof again? And you brought two Mr. Weasleys with you. Yi Feng and the others, who were happily doing morning exercises to stretch their bodies, were suddenly startled when they heard Dumbledore's voice. The Weasley twins were so frightened that they ran out with a cry, but the moment they ran out, they again stopped. As for Yi Feng, his reaction was not as big as that of the Weasley twins. Although he was also startled, he was frightened because he was immersed in teaching the Weasley twins to do morning exercises, so he was frightened by the sudden sound, so when he found out that it was Dumbledore calling them, he was not scared. Instead, he gave Dumbledore a bright smile. Good morning, Headmaster Dumbledore. I am teaching the two Mr. Weasleys to do morning exercises. Doing morning exercises every day can quickly activate the body, which is very beneficial to physical and mental health. 
Principal Dumbledore, do you want to try it? It is also useful for the elderly. Maybe it can improve your health. My body is several years younger. How much younger? How about, try? No, Mr. Yi Feng, please don't change the subject. It's not a question of whether to do morning exercises now. Why are you on the roof? Didn't I read out the new school rules in public in the auditorium yesterday? Are you going to violate the school rules? Three gentlemen. Hearing Dumbledore's words, Yi Feng nodded very seriously and said, Yes, if I remember correctly, the new school rule is, young wizards in lower grades are absolutely not allowed to climb to the roof to watch the sunrise, but Principal Dumbledore, we are not watching the sunrise, we are doing morning exercises now, so we are not violating school rules. Dumbledore, katakana middle dot underscore katakana middle dot, is, is that so? As he spoke, Dumbledore took out his wand and flicked it, and a thick book flew in front of him. As he flicked his wand, the thick book flew out, automatically flipping quickly to the last page. On the last page, or the last page with writing, there were three school rules that were still very new in ink, and one of these three school rules was exactly what Yi Feng said. Epsilon equals Omicron backquote asterisk alas. Seeing that what Yi Feng said was exactly what was written in the school rules, Dumbledore couldn't help but sigh. He finally understood why Snape was so angry yesterday, because this student he recruited from that mysterious country was indeed different from everyone else. Different. It seems that I will have a headache in the future. I don't know if I am right or wrong in recruiting this little guy. Looking at the boy in the distance with his back to the rising sun and a dazzling smile, Dumbledore rubbed his forehead in distress. Comma. That day, all the wizards who entered the restaurant to have breakfast were told not to leave in a hurry after breakfast. Principal Dumbledore had something to announce to them. When Yi Feng heard the news, he guessed that it should be with him this morning. It has to do with what the Weasley twins did. This is exactly what happened. When all the wizards finished their breakfast, Dumbledore bowed his head slightly and apologized, saying, I'm sorry that I delayed everyone's time because of some of my mistakes, but this matter must be corrected as soon as possible, so I chose to leave you all behind to announce this. For some reasons, one of the three school rules announced yesterday is hereby officially declared invalid. After saying this, Dumbledore took a deep look at Yi Feng, and all the wizards were in an uproar when they heard Dumbledore's words. The school rules are invalidated. Why? Wasn't this just announced yesterday? What is the school rule? You can't cook food in potions class, or you can't climb to the roof to watch the sunrise. To be honest, I never thought of climbing to the roof to watch the sunrise before. If I can get an appointment with Dilly, let's watch the sunrise together and give her a surprise. Maybe she can agree to be my girlfriend. What is going on? Dumbledore is not the kind of person who changes his mind every day. It has only been one night. What happened? Comma. Both students and teachers couldn't help but start talking after hearing Dumbledore's announcement. Dumbledore didn't let them wait long. After only five or six seconds, he raised his hand and pressed it down to signal others to stop talking. Calm down. Okay, no need to guess. The school rule I want to abolish is, little wizards in lower grades are never allowed to climb to the roof to watch the sunrise. No, it can't be said to be invalid. I think there are still big loopholes in this school rule. So I wanted to modify it, and I was able to discover this loophole thanks to classmate Yi Feng. So, in view of classmate Yi Feng's contribution, I decided to give Gryffindor 20 points. Yi Feng, Sigma, Su degree D degree winking face, Su. Yi Feng was stunned when he heard Dumbledore's words, and the other Gryffindors, including the Weasley twins, cheered loudly with excitement, because this was not just 20 points, but also an honor. After all, the extra points there are not many who can make contributions to the college and be personally recognized by the principal. Seeing this scene, Dumbledore raised the corners of his mouth slightly, glanced at Yi Feng with deep meaning, and then continued to speak. In view of Yi Feng's, reminder, I decided to change this school rule. And without mastery of levitation, the broomstick wizard climbed to the roof. Besides that, I have a suggestion, and of course it's just a suggestion. Mr. Yi Feng, Mr. Fred Weasley and Mr. George Weasley, if you want to do morning exercises in the future, I suggest you go down to the open space below the college to do it. This is safe and will not disturb other people. What do you think? How about a proposal? 
Dumbledore has already mentioned this, what else can Yi Feng and the others say? He had no choice but to agree. As for not being able to go to the roof, there would be broomstick lessons and charms lessons soon. Once he learned how to control the broomstick and then buy a broom, if he couldn't go to the roof, he wouldn't go on it. When Yi Feng lowered his head and thought, some thoughtful people also came to understand what was going on, so they looked at Yi Feng with surprised eyes, and as some people explained in low voices, everyone soon understood some people understood what was probably going on, which made them look at Yi Feng even more curious. As expected of a Gryffindor, so many things have happened in just a few days since school started. Try to see if you can make a friend first. If not, you will be a strong opponent. As an opponent, you have to prepare early. The crowd looked at Yi Feng with different meanings in their eyes, and Yi Feng ran away as soon as Dumbledore announced that the matter was over and they could go back to prepare for class. Now he is considered a famous figure, and his popularity in the school is only slightly lower than that of Harry Potter. Therefore, if he is surrounded by this group of people, he will not be able to escape in a short time. He does not want to be with these people. When it comes to entanglement, especially some seniors are not so honest with their hands. Just taking the opportunity to pinch someone's face is already considered a big deal. On the podium, a short and bald figure stood on top of stacks of books. He was Yi Feng's teacher of today's charms class, Phileas Flivy, the Dean of Ravenclaw. Although Phileas Flivy is short in stature, as the headmaster of Ravenclaw, a gathering place for top students, there is absolutely no doubt about his level of magic. And if Harry was not in Gryffindor and he needed to contact Hagrid, he would definitely go to Ravenclaw. But it's not bad now. After all, Phileas Flivy will not hide his secrets just because you are not a Ravenclaw, and you can find them in many spell books. Of course, there is a big gap between self-study from books and being taught by others, because many of Hogwarts spells need to resonate with your voice, that is, you need to recite the spells, and you can't pronounce them wrong to make yourself happy. The magic works according to the resonance. Therefore, when Phileas Flivy began to lecture, no one in the audience dared to miss out, because as long as you mishear a note and pronounce it slightly wrong, you will not be able to release the curse. As for Yi Feng, he paid full attention to all the details of Phileas Flivy during his demonstration, including hand movements, tone of voice, pauses, etc. Of course, the most important thing is the fluctuation and movement of magic power, which he directly observes with his spiritual consciousness. Wingardium, Leviosa. After Professor Phileas Flivy finished speaking, Yi Feng's voice also sounded. As Yi Feng finished speaking, he gently raised his wand, and the feather on the table floated gently, and Yi Feng saw the feather after floating up, his eyes suddenly lit up because he thought of something. Since the floating spell can make objects fly and can control the direction of movement of floating objects, wouldn't it be possible to control these objects to kill enemies by increasing the magic power applied to floating objects? Isn't this a royal animal? Yi Feng, who suddenly thought of this, screamed in his heart, so he increased the output of his magic power. It's a pity that modifying the magic spell is not that simple. Otherwise, after so many years of development in the magic world, smart people will always think of this possibility. However, until now, the magic world has not had a magic spell that can directly control objects and attack. This is enough to explain. Problem. So without any warning, when the magic power Yi Feng applied to the floating feathers increased to a certain level, the feathers ignited with a golden flame, burning them out almost instantly. Although the feathers were burned by the sudden flames, Yi Feng was not discouraged because he found that his idea was right, but it was a pity that the feathers could not carry the magic power he input, so they spontaneously combusted. This is the right direction, but if you want to create a magic item that can withstand a large amount of magic and have enough lethality, it is better to just learn a good magic spell. Maybe this is because there has been no magic item to control objects and kill enemies for so many years. It's one of the reasons why it appeared. Thinking of this, Yi Feng had no intention of continuing to explore, because he knew how to control things, so there was no need for him to bother studying a skill that he already knew and used with great proficiency. Although Yi Feng's feathers were burned off, there was no doubt that his floating spell was successfully cast, and Hermione was worthy of being a top student who could lead her teammates even in a two-on-one situation. She just one step slower than Yi Feng, she also cast the floating spell without burning her feathers. 
Seeing that both Yi Feng and Hermione succeeded, others were also stimulated, especially Malfoy. However, the more anxious you are about curses, the harder it is to pronounce them correctly. Therefore, Malfoy failed to succeed until the end of class. This made Ronald, who succeeded after practicing for most of the class, laugh at him. Yi Feng didn't know what was going on. These two guys seemed to be a pair of natural enemies. Even though Yi Feng attracted most of Malfoy's firepower without paying attention, they still faced each other, and they did so every three days. We'll get into a fight. What's so great about just a floating spell? I just let it go on purpose. Now I'm going to let you see the results of one session of practice. Yingardum, Leviosa, after saying this, Malfoy pointed his wand directly at Ronald. To everyone's surprise, when Malfoy pointed his wand at Ronald, a white light flew out of his wand instantly. It fell on Ronald. Seeing Malfoy attacking Ronald directly, everyone was frightened. Ronald even turned around in fear to see if he was okay. When he found that there was no change in his body, and no one appeared. The blood hole and all the rest suddenly breathed a sigh of relief, only Yi Feng's eyes burst out with a dazzling light. I thought about it. Since ordinary objects can't withstand the magic power I apply, then I can completely change the object of the magic power. For example, it would be great to change it to a man-controlling technique, or something like that. Of course, it is not that simple to study the human control skill. After all, there is a big difference between dead objects and living people. So now Yi Feng just has this idea. How to operate it specifically needs to be done after he goes back. Think slowly. When Yi Feng was thinking about the feasibility of the man controlled technique, Ronald, who was looking at him, suddenly felt a chill on his back, which made him shiver and rub his arms, while Phileas Foley Way dismissed the class after making sure Ronald was fine, and warned Malfoy not to use magic on his classmates at will, especially attack magic. The courses at Hogwarts are still very relaxed, not as demanding as in China. There are only two classes in the morning, and there is a short break at noon. However, they do not have a lunch break, or the college does not require students to take a lunch break at noon. Therefore, after the morning class and lunch, the students went to do what they like to do. As for Yi Feng, he did not go to the library to study or disturb Zhang Chu, but left the college. Quietly ran to the edge of the Black Lake. In order to avoid Dumbledore's sight as much as possible, it took Yi Feng two full noons to find a fishing position with a good view, a decent water depth, shade from trees, and even a place where lounge chairs, small tables, etc. could be placed. Very good, the fishing position has been cleared. Don't worry about the big squid. I will catch you right away. I also brought you cumin, iron plate, chili powder and many other ingredients, ahem, it's delicious. With Yi Feng's murmur, Yi Feng skillfully set up a yellow fishing rod, and then skillfully pulled the fishing line in front of him. After getting the fish hook, he skillfully baited the fish hook, and then skillfully followed the bait with it. Throw the line to the appropriate distance. While Yi Feng was concentrating on fishing, Dumbledore, who was holding a telescope in the distance, couldn't help but sigh. Minerva, go and bring that little guy back. Dumbledore, I kind of understand now why you brought him back to the academy. His talent is the highest I have seen in so many years, but... Minerva didn't finish her words, but Dumbledore knew exactly what she was going to say, because he was thinking the same thing at the moment. Yi Feng's talent was indeed the highest they had seen in so many years, even higher than Voldemort's back then, so high that he even wanted to change his training target to Yi Feng. But at the same time, this guy's ability to cause trouble was so high that it gave him a headache. Minerva, I can only take the trouble to pay more attention to him. Maybe there is more than one choice for the future. I see another hope that is slowly lighting up. Mr. Yi Feng, the school rules of Hogwarts clearly stipulate that fishing in forbidden lakes is prohibited. Principal Dumbledore is already waiting for you in the principal's office. Yi Feng, who is concentrating on watching the floating water, did not notice at all the vice principal Minerva who had arrived behind him at some point. Therefore, when the vice principal suddenly spoke, he was frightened and trembled all over, stiff. It took Yi Feng two full afternoons to find this suitable fishing position and clear it out, just to make sure that the position was good enough and concealed enough, but it took him less than half an hour to concentrate on fishing. Dumbledore, are you a dog? 
You're staring at me so hard. Why don't you watch your little Harry staring at me? Yi Feng had many thoughts in his mind at the moment he was scolded by Vice Principal Minerva. In addition to complaining about Dumbledore, he also regretted that he had restrained his consciousness in order to experience the fun of fishing. Although Yi Feng is not an experienced fisherman, he still likes to enjoy the fun of fishing, so he never uses his spiritual consciousness to cheat when fishing. Otherwise, as long as his spiritual consciousness is turned on, it will be clear whether there is a fish or whether the fish has eaten the bait. Chu, even in this case, as long as the fish passes by the hook, he can directly lift the rod and anchor the fish. However, what one enjoys when fishing is the joy of waiting for the fish to bite the hook, then, fighting wits, with it, and finally pulling it up and putting it in the net bag, so Yi Feng never uses his spiritual consciousness to cheat. Yi Feng's habit is undoubtedly in line with the thoughts of a fisherman, but it is precisely because of this that he did not realize that he had been targeted by Dumbledore. He did not wake up until the enemy touched the back and stole the house. That Vice Principal McGonagall, you just listen to my quibbles and don't explain. Mr. Yi Feng, you don't need to explain to me. If you have anything to do, wait until you get to the principal's office and tell Principal Dumbledore. I believe he will give you a satisfactory answer. Yi Feng shocked face carrot back quote oh. Hearing McGonagall's words, Yi Feng was a little helpless, but he was caught red-handed and had no choice but to do anything. Just when he was about to close his pole and accept the punishment, the float on the water suddenly sank and hit the black mark referring to the fish float completely sinking in the water and at the same time as the black mark, a huge force came from the fishing rod. Whoosh. Yi Feng. N airy summation opening parenthesis D note no. Plop. Professor McGonagall. N airy summation opening parenthesis D note no. Professor Yi Feng McGonagall was stunned when she saw Professor Yi Feng flying out and then falling into the forbidden lake with a thud. But she quickly came to her senses and took out her wand to cast magic while watching from the window of the principal's office. Dumbledore here was equally shocked when he saw this scene. Although Harry is the son of the prophecy that he believes can defeat Voldemort and save the magical world, he also sees Yi Feng's super talent, so although he does not pay as much attention to Yi Feng as Harry does, Yi Feng is still there. He also has a heavy weight in his heart. Therefore, when Dumbledore saw Yi Feng being dragged down by the creatures in the Forbidden Lake, he directly used phantom movement to come to Professor McGonagall, and at the moment he appeared, his wand lit up. While Professor McGonagall and Dumbledore on the shore were anxiously trying to rescue Yi Feng, Yi Feng, who was pulled into the water, was very excited because he saw the big fish biting the hook and dragging him into the water. What dragged him into the water was not the huge squid, but a large silver fish that was one meter long. Judging from its slender and powerful body, it must taste very good, so Yi Feng suddenly pulled the fishing rod, the body also adjusted in the water and stood up as if on the shore. The moment Yi Feng stood up straight in the water, the fishing rod in his hand was suddenly pulled into a large bow. The big fish swimming wildly was also directly pulled back, and its forward speed dropped instantly. Seeing that he had controlled the big fish, Yi Feng's heart moved. The magic power around him quietly acted on his thoughts, directly lifting his body to the surface of the lake. While Yi Feng pulled the fishing rod to float, the water surface continued to surge. Dumbledore and McGonagall, who had already flown to the lake, were about to use magic to rescue Yi Feng from the water, but the next second they were stunned. In front of them, a thin fishing rod quickly broke through the water and swayed continuously. The straight fishing line made a whining sound as it was pulled quickly on both sides. But that's not what shocked them the most. What shocked them the most was that when the fishing rod slowly floated up, a sullen and serious controller of the fishing rod was, fighting, with the big fish in the lake. The little guy floated up from the lake. Levitation spell. Without a magic wand and without a formula, how is this possible? Silent, weaponless casting, this, is this really the little wizard who just entered school? Is he a monster? Yi Feng, ideographic period. Carrot, ideographic period. Although you are my principal and vice principal, if you say this about me, I will still sue you for defamation. Of course, I think so, but I can't say it. After all, he is now a criminal. Whether he will be punished or not, whether he will be punished or not, depends on the mood of the two people, so Yi Feng is not interested. 
Instead of speaking, he struggled with the fish and tried to pull it to the shore. Dumbledore and Professor McGonagall didn't know what they were thinking. After seeing Yi Feng safe and healthy and fighting the fish vigorously, the two of them stopped moving. They just stood beside him quietly and looked at him. Half an hour later, Yi Feng pulled the exhausted fish ashore. I didn't expect you to be able to pull up such a big fish. It seems I still underestimated you. Stronger than ordinary people or even adults, you can cast spells silently and without a wand. Mr. Yi Feng, you really brought me many surprises. However, you did violate the school's ban, so this fish was confiscated. Yi Feng. N airy summation opening parenthesis D no no. No, Principal Dumbledore. If you punish me, don't confiscate my fish. I am willing to copy the school rules. If it doesn't work once, I can do it twice, or three times, as long as my fish is not confiscated. In principle, I can promise that I will never cause trouble again within a month. What's the biggest punishment for a fisherman? It's not that the Air Force is fighting turtles, it's not that the fishing rod is broken, it's not that it's forbidden to go fishing. The biggest punishment for fishermen is to let the fish run away when they catch it and are about to put it in their care, and the intensity of the punishment is proportional to the size of the fish. If an ordinary fisherman catches a fish the size of the fish Yi Feng caught now and runs away, then he might say in frustration when he closes his eyes, I wish I had been more careful. In the end, Yi Feng's fish was still not saved, but the good news was that it would be one of the main ingredients for today's dinner, and as a price for confiscating the fish, Dumbledore did not make any additional changes to him for coming here to fish. Punishment, but this is actually the biggest punishment. Therefore, when many students were happily enjoying the fish on the table in the evening, only Yi Feng looked at the two finger sized piece of fried fish in front of him gloomily. Fortunately, there was a broomstick class tomorrow afternoon, which made Yi Feng a little bit feeling better. HMPH, Principal Dumbledore, I will make you regret the decision you made today. This month, I will let you know what is called an immortal cultivator. My poor big white bait, you died miserably. But it's so cute, you can still move it when you feed it. Is that Yi Feng? It's the first time I discovered that Asians can be so cute. What should I do? I suddenly fell in love with him. Wake up, you are already a 16-year-old girl and he is only an 11-year-old child. You are not suitable. Who said I want to be his girlfriend? I can be his sister. If I can bring such a cute brother back during the summer vacation, I don't think my mother will refuse. Cute. Only you Gryffindors would find him cute. What I saw was another Weasley twin. So what? Cuteness is enough. What's more, Xiao Yi Feng's talent is so strong. This is something Professor Dumbledore has personally admitted. That will be a super genius who may surpass him. Comma. Yi Feng. Katakana middle dot underscore katakana middle dot. Yi Feng was very happy when he first heard those seniors discussing him. After all, it was a happy thing to have his appearance confirmed. But as he listened, he realized that something was wrong because Dumbledore himself said admit that he has no idea that his talent is stronger. Although the noseless one was already half disabled, he wouldn't be afraid even if he was not disabled, but he didn't want to be pushed out of the way to block the gun for no apparent reason, and he wasn't the kind of person who liked to be in the limelight. In fact, he has a stable quality in his heart. For example, he doesn't like to be too bright. For example, he will try his best to restrain his light and not be the leader, nor be the tail of the crane, but just mix in the middle and be the sixth or something. Of course, these are not the most important things. The most important thing is that those senior students are really good at it. As the saying goes, a female hooligan is not scary. What is really scary is a group of female hooligans gathering together. So after Yi Feng swallowed the fish in his mouth, he directly said hello to Hermione and Harry and left. Seeing Yi Feng run away quietly, Dumbledore, who was sitting at the top, smiled and picked up the wine glass and took a sip. He is old now and has limited energy. In addition, he has to take care of Harry, so Yi Feng will definitely not be able to keep an eye on him, so he thought of a way to make Yi Feng into a star like Harry. But Dumbledore didn't expect that Yi Feng would be so loved by the senior students after he pushed him out. This was a surprise, but his goal had been achieved. But to be honest, after the food was ready, Yi Feng's originally thin face slowly began to grow fleshy. With that fleshy,
pink appearance, he sometimes had the idea of pinching it, so those female students would it's normal to like Yi Feng. What's more, Dumbledore also discovered that Yi Feng had a light fragrance on his body, which was a light natural fragrance similar to that of plants and flowers. Being by his side would make people feel calm and peaceful, so Yi Feng was so many people like him, and it is absolutely normal for so many people to fight to hold him. Yi Feng didn't know this, so he couldn't figure out why so many girls suddenly wanted to hug him. As for the light fragrance on his body, in fact, as long as he reaches a certain level of immortality, his body will become pure. Body, and he had already achieved it, so he didn't realize it at all. But even though he didn't know this, he instinctively sensed the danger, so he ran away while most people were not full. There are no self-study classes at Hogwarts at night, so Yi Feng sneaked back to his dormitory after dinner. As soon as Yi Feng returned to the dormitory, he heard a loud cry, and then a small round ball that was only half the size of a fist. The ball silently landed on Yi Feng's shoulder, and gently pecked Yi Feng's neck. Okay, okay, I know you are hungry. I brought you a piece of fresh fish. Eat it quickly. As he spoke, Yi Feng turned his hand and took out a piece of fish that was only the size of a thumb and handed it to Xiao Yuan on his shoulder. Ball. You guessed it right, the little round ball that came over to Yi Feng to act coquettishly and begged for something to eat was precisely because of little fatty's owl. Yi Feng also didn't expect that the owl he bought that he thought would grow to be very big turned out to be the smallest owl in the world. The bird's owl, the smallest owl that should not appear here, with an adult size of only 12 centimeters. However, despite its small stature, all the elixirs that Yi Feng had refined before went into its belly. So even though it can fly, if it really wants to fight, even an eagle owl that is dozens of times larger than it can't fight. You must be able to beat it. After feeding his owl, Yi Feng went to study his transformation technique. After all, he still had a system task. When his roommate came back, he had already fallen asleep. The next morning, Yi Feng, who had gone to bed early, also got up early, but this time he did not go to the roof to take the purple energy, but was going to find a sunny window, so. Headmaster Dumbledore, get up soon. The sun is going to shine on your butt. Dumbledore. N airy summation opening parenthesis D note no. Dumbledore, who was lying peacefully on the bed with a pointed nightcap on was startled by the sudden knock on the door. When he sat up with a confused look on his face, Yi Feng had already opened his door and walked to the window as if nothing had happened. He opened the window and took a deep breath. Ah, the air in the morning is so fresh. Every morning when I open the window and take a deep breath of fresh air, I feel a lot more energetic. While Yi Feng said this, the sun in the sky just jumped out of the horizon. Yi Feng's there was also a flash of purple in his eyes. Gulu. Huh. With a long exhalation, Yi Feng had a bright smile on his face again, and when he turned around, Dumbledore was still sitting on his little bed, not knowing what to do. Morning, Principal Dumbledore, do you want me to help you bring your clothes? Okay, thanks. Key backquote D. Just as he was about to say thank you, Dumbledore suddenly came to his senses and was now fully awake. Classmate Yi Feng, can you tell me how you got into my room? If I remember correctly, the door of my room was enchanted, without my permission or password, even by Voldemort. They can't come in. Hearing Dumbledore's words, Yi Feng tilted his head and asked with an extremely innocent look on his face, is there any? I just knocked on the door and opened it by myself, and then I came in. Principal Dumbledore, could it be that you forgot to close the door last night? Why don't you think carefully, did you not check whether the door was closed or not after you came in last night? Hearing Yi Feng's words, Dumbledore also became deeply suspicious, because it seemed that he might indeed have left the door open. Wait a minute, I was almost fooled by this little devil. This is a magic door. The magic door will close automatically, no one needs to close it personally. Seeing Dumbledore's reaction, Yi Feng ran away quickly, and shouted as he ran. I remember, Principal Dumbledore. Harry made an appointment with me yesterday and asked me to teach him morning exercises. I can't leave first without being late. I'll come see you again tomorrow. The man who spoke before Yi Feng had already disappeared, which made Dumbledore almost laugh angrily, but he soon came to his senses. This little guy was probably far more talented than he thought. After all, he exerted influence on the room. 
Although the enchantment on the door cannot really stop Voldemort, ordinary professors at Hogwarts may not be able to break it silently and instantly. It seems that this child is more mysterious than I thought. He is indeed a little wizard from that country. I hope you can bring me more surprises. If Dumbledore knew what would happen in the future, I'm afraid he would give himself a hard slap because the surprise Yi Feng brought to him was far beyond his imagination. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The cheerful beat sounded from Hogwarts, and under the rising sun, a delicate and cute 11 year old boy led a group of people to clumsily do morning exercises with a serious look on his face. Yi Feng was not lying to Dumbledore when he said that Harry made an appointment with him to teach him morning exercises. Instead, he was probably curious about this and made Dumbledore quickly change the morning exercises that he had set the school rules the day before. The Weasley twins and Harry shouted, and now there were ten students standing behind Yi Feng doing exercises with him. At the beginning, Harry and the others felt that this set of movements was useless, and they even didn't want to do it because of some inexplicable shame. However, after they followed Yi Feng and did it halfway, they suddenly found that their bodies felt a lot more relaxed, and there was a warm feeling in the whole body, which made their eyes widen in an instant. Although Yi Feng did not modify this set of broadcast gymnastics, this world has supernatural power like magic, so when they followed Yi Feng to do this set of broadcast gymnastics that can mobilize all the muscles and bones of the body, the energy in their body's magical power begins to flow and nourish their bodies. Although this kind of nourishment will not make them become immortal cultivators, there is absolutely no problem in becoming better, younger and healthier than other wizards over time. He discovered this as early as the first day when the Weasley twins did morning exercises with him, but this enhancement was nothing to the current Yi Feng, so he didn't care at all. However, Yi Feng didn't care that Dumbledore, who was quietly following him, was extremely shocked when he found out, because although the daily improvement in strength of the current dance is pitifully weak, it is still a considerable improvement in the long run. More importantly, Dumbledore also discovered that while doing this set of actions, the magic power on Harry and the others was slowly increasing at the same time. Is this why this little guy is more powerful than others? He is such a mysterious and cute little guy. He can teach you such a precious thing without any secrets. While sighing, Dumbledore also quietly swayed to the beat of Yi Feng. When he felt the warmth rising in his body, he was still a little unable to let go, but his slightly squirmed figure instantly let go. Once opened, the movements have become much more standard. But how do you say something? You stand on the bridge and look at the scenery, and the people watching the scenery are watching you upstairs. While Dumbledore was hiding upstairs watching Yi Feng and the others doing exercises and following along, Snape was looking at him in shock in the corridor a little further away from Dumbledore. Snape was shocked and in disbelief when he first saw the respected Dumbledore doing these actions, but in addition to being an excellent magician, he was also an excellent potions professor. He was very aware of the fluctuations in magic power. Perception is also quite strong. Therefore, he soon discovered the undulating magic power on Dumbledore, and when he tried to follow Dumbledore's movements, he was immediately shocked, because this set of movements could not only enhance his physical fitness but also increase the amount of magic stored in his body. As expected of Principal Dumbledore, it's a pity that I only learned a little bit of this set of tail moves. If I could learn them all. With this idea in mind, Snape came to yesterday's location very early the next day. With yesterday's experience, Snape was not as shocked today as he was yesterday, which also gave him more time to observe other things and then he discovered that Dumbledore was actually following others in doing this set of actions. Is it Yi Feng's morning exercise? No wonder Professor Dumbledore tolerates him so much. If it were me, maybe. Snape didn't finish what he said, let alone spread it, but like Dumbledore, he also had another habit, but he got up by himself, while Dumbledore got up after enjoying Yi Feng's wake-up call service. However, there is a saying that goes well, if you often walk by the river, your shoes will not get wet. The more times you go there, you will be bumped into by a student one day, not to mention more and more students are coming to do exercises with Yi Feng. So, one day, a student who happened to pass by was shocked to find that Professor Snape, who was so unsmiling that many students secretly guessed that he might not smile at all, was actually secretly following Yi Feng and the others to do their morning exercises. 
Judging from the opponent's proficiency in movements, this time is not short. Of course, these are all things for later, and it was precisely because of that incident that the matter of morning exercises was spread throughout the school. So under the leadership of Dumbledore, it was natural that there would be one more student in Hogwarts College. Shang is different from the tradition of other magic colleges and even schools, doing morning exercises. Yi Feng didn't know what happened next. At this moment, he was looking forward to the open space in the middle of the academy that was specially used for learning to fly broomsticks. Why I say touching instead of walking is naturally because he is a bit too famous now. In addition, the people who did exercises with him in the morning went back to publicize the effects of doing exercises with him, so now it is not just those beautiful ladies and seniors also joined in blocking him. So that afternoon, when all the first grade wizards stood neatly in two rows in the middle of the broomstick training ground, the rather embarrassed Yi Feng finally came like the wind, and when Yi Feng saw them when there was a broom in front of me with almost no broom branches, my expectations turned into disappointment in an instant. You must know that he went around several times in order to attend this class, battled wits with a group of people, tried to lure a snake out of its hole, and finally escaped from the encirclement, and came here. However, although this thing's quality was a little off, it was still a broomstick after all, and it was only for practice. They could buy new ones later, so Yi Feng took a quick look and found a place where no one was standing before leaving, passed. To be honest, although he also felt that using this kind of broomstick with a small half of the broomstick broken off for students to practice was a bit cheap, it was still acceptable, but when he saw that the broomstick in front of him had been coated with pulp, and the branches at the tail when almost all the flying broomsticks were dropped, Yi Feng still broke through. This kind of school is specially used for the training of newly admitted young wizards. It is acceptable for Yi Feng to have worn out items passed down from generation to generation but you must at least keep one, whole corpse. But what about the broomstick in front of him? The thing in front of him now is not so much a flying broomstick as it is a flying stick. Although it is said that broomsticks are for flying and not for sweeping the floor, but this is to a sense of the times low EQ, shabby, right? As soon as Yi Feng said this, everyone looked at him, and when they saw the flying broomstick in front of Yi Feng, they laughed out loud at the same time. Even the teacher who taught them the broomstick class couldn't bear it. Zhu turned his head away. Ahem, classmate Yi Feng, there are only so many usable broomsticks left in our college. Even though the broomstick in front of you is almost crossed out, it can still be used normally. Quote. Yi Feng. Professor Hooch, could you look me in the eyes and say what you just said again? Although he complained in his heart, Yi Feng could only endure it. After all, who made him come the last? In order to avoid those, enthusiastic, seniors and come here to attend class, Yi Feng walked around for half an hour after leaving the dormitory. Although he was not late in the end, he was also the last one to arrive. As the last one to arrive, he naturally, I can only choose this one over the remaining broomsticks. Okay, let's all stand next to the broomstick. Seeing that Yi Feng didn't say anything else, Teacher Hooch coughed slightly to quiet the students, and walked to the side of the broomstick. The use of a flying broomstick is actually very simple, because it is equivalent to a refined aircraft. All the wizard needs to do is to use his own magic power to establish a connection with the broomstick, and then control it to fly. As for control, Yi Feng took a look just now. It should be similar to a balancing car. It all depends on one's talent and practice. Rise. When the teacher taught me how to get the broomstick on the ground, Yi Feng just said softly and the broomstick on the ground flew to his outstretched right hand and was caught by him casually. However, looking at the bare broomstick in his hand that had been covered with pulp by previous generations of students, Yi Feng couldn't help but be speechless, because this thing didn't look like a broom, but rather like a stick, which was not quite the same. Straight stick. The people nearby were quite surprised when they saw Yi Feng calling this, stick, all of a sudden. After all, this thing was almost the same as a stick in their eyes, and Yi Feng could actually use it in this situation. The cry was indeed beyond their expectations. But the others quickly turned their attention away. After all, Yi Feng was not the only one who could summon a flying broomstick at once. Harry and Malfoy also succeeded. Although the others were not able to call their broomsticks all at once, they could still succeed with five or six calls at most. 
Hogwarts is a magic school, and all they can recruit are wizards. There is no need to learn or practice anything to become a wizard, so it is a broomstick that has been built long ago and can be used by almost any wizard. Not difficult. Of course, it is not difficult to return, but there are still some small problems. For example, Ronald was too eager when he aroused the broomstick, causing the broomstick to fly up very violently, and the broomstick directly gave him a blow on the head. Such an episode did not affect Mrs. Hooch's class, so she saw all the students holding the broomsticks in their hands and directly asked the students to ride on the brooms, and after hearing her whistle, they took off one after another. Because Yi Feng came the latest and was the last in line, so generally speaking, his turn should be the last, so Yi Feng was not in a hurry at all. He looked at the flying broomstick in his hand and wondered what those male wizards were doing. After I sat on it, it was so stable and not too heavy. How about, adding a seat cushion? It would be better to add a handle as a rudder, two pedals, and if possible, a fence guard plate. That would be perfect. Beep. While thinking, a loud whistle sounded, and then Yi Feng heard the noise coming from the middle of the team, and when he looked towards the middle, he saw Neville sitting on a broomstick and flying up. W degree degree W. I didn't expect Neville to be so powerful. He could control the broomstick to fly in an instant. As soon as Yi Feng finished his surprised words, Neville screamed and ran out. It was at this time that Yi Feng saw that Neville must have been unable to control his magic power and the broomstick under his butt was out of control. It seems that Neville hasn't learned how to cast spells without weapons, right? Doesn't that mean that he can't get off the broomstick by himself or control the broomstick? Thinking of this, Yi Feng threw the flying broom in his hand to the ground and stepped on it. Whoosh! As a sound broke through the air, Yi Feng, who was standing on the broomstick, flew away. In this scene, not to mention these little wizards who had just arrived like Yi Feng, it was Mrs. Hooch who had taught broomstick lessons for so long. They were all shocked, because even she had never seen a broomstick used like this. Cool. He's so handsome. Although this is not the correct way to use a broomstick, I have to say that it is indeed very handsome. HMPH, he's just a clown trying to please others. He'll pay the price for his actions soon. He'll be smashed into pieces and chewed in the mud. He might even break his legs. Surface, Yi Feng is not the kind of person you think. I think he must want to save Neville, and I believe he can do it. When Hermione retorted Malfoy, Yi Feng was already chasing after him on his broomstick. He got on Neville, but he couldn't do it for a while. Because Neville's broomstick is completely out of control, his flight trajectory is completely unpredictable. Not to mention flying up, down, left and right, now he can even fly upside down and spin in crazy circles, so even if Yi Feng temporarily there was no way to reach out and save him. Hey! Suddenly, Neville's broomstick took him straight towards the spear in the hands of the towering statue in front of them at an extremely fast speed. Although the statue is not very big, it is just the size of a normal person, but I don't know what Hogwarts thinks. The sharp spear in the statue's hand is actually real, the kind that can be used directly after being taken off kind. Although Neville's flying height should not directly hit the spear, you can't bet on this kind of thing. If you lose the bet, the future Gryffindor sword master may be gone, so Yi Feng took out his wand. I lost it. Pa, pa, dang 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 dang. As a violent sound broke through the air, the broomstick sitting under Neville's butt was directly shot through and exploded from behind by the wand thrown by Yi Feng. Moreover, because Yi Feng threw it with too much force, the wand penetrated Neville's horse. The flying broomstick did not stop but continued forward, directly smashing the statue directly in front of Neville. The statue holding the spear was shot to pieces. Naturally, the spear it held could not stand upright and fell from the roof with a loud clanking sound. And Yi Feng, he took advantage of the broomstick Neville was riding. After the explosion, Neville rushed over and grabbed his clothes when he was flying. He lifted him forward like a kitten. When rushing past the exploding statue, Yi Feng reached out and took back the wand that fell on the roof, and dropped the shocked Neville to the ground. Pa, pa, pa. The moment Yi Feng put Neville on the ground, all the first-year wizards gathered around and applauded Yi Feng, even Mrs. Hooch did the same. However, when it was confirmed that no one was injured and the class continued, and Ronald and Malfoy also followed Yi Feng's example and stepped on the broomstick under their feet to compete, Mrs. Hooch's face turned dark. 
What are you doing? Broomsticks are for riding on, not for stepping on. But why can Yi Feng do it? Yi Feng, Yi Feng. Ronald's words immediately silenced Mrs. Hooch, because she couldn't figure out why Yi Feng could stand on the broomstick and control the broomstick flight, and the whole process was very smooth, much better than the broomstick she controlled while sitting. And smoother. Huh, you have also seen what happened to Neville. It is very dangerous to use a broomstick without following the regulations. Yi Feng's incident was just an accident, so follow the rules. Yi Feng, you too. Hearing Mrs. Hooch's words, Yi Feng was a little disapproving. If you let him fly with a broomstick with only one stick, you might as well kill him. As for not being able to stand on it, there is no stipulation in the school rules anyway, and even if it is stipulated, so what? Sample. I can't stand or add anything. Because of Mrs. Hooch's sanction, Yi Feng did not participate in the following exercises, and Harry showed an amazing talent in controlling the broomstick in the following exercises. Therefore, while others were still practicing, Yi Feng and Harry were dragged by Vice Principal Minerva, who was watching from a distance, to find the captain of the Gryffindor Quidditch team, Oliver Wood. Potter, Yi Feng, this is Oliver Wood. I have found two excellent seekers for you. Both of them have very strong talents. You can try to train them. Yi Feng, oh, asterisk, carrot, carrot, asterisk. Okay, Mr. Yi Feng, please speak. Seeing Yi Feng raise his hand, Professor McGonagall signaled that Yi Feng could speak. With the permission of Vice Principal McGonagall, Yi Feng said something that surprised Harry and all of them. Actually, I'm not very interested in Quidditch. I can just leave the seeker to Harry. Although Yi Feng has never participated in Quidditch training, he is really not very interested in this kind of sport. After all, Quidditch requires you to sit on a flying broom to grab the ball, and there are no entertainment activities. In the magic world, Yi Feng has seen many sports and fun things. Although they regretted Yi Feng's choice, McGonagall and the others still respected Yi Feng's choice and did not force it, let alone tell the matter. However, they underestimated the ability of people who like gossip to find information. When get out of class was over the next day, the whole school was talking about Harry becoming a seeker, but this was not the most heated discussion. The most heated discussion was another thing, that is, Yi Feng rejected the idea of joining Quidditch as a seeker. Yi Feng, why do you refuse to become a seeker? As far as I know, this is a dream for many wizards. After lunch, Hermione was following Yi Feng to find a place to review what she had learned in the morning. The resident asked the question in his mind. Yes, why? Ronald, who came out shortly after, couldn't help but agree, and Harry next to him couldn't help but nodded. Looking at the longing eyes of Iron Triangle in the original drama, Yi Feng sighed slightly and said, Do you really want to know? That's right. Times three. Three loud answers sounded at the same time, even attracting the attention of nearby classmates because the sound was a bit too loud. It's actually very simple. Finding the ball is too simple for me. I have no interest in things that are too simple. Hermione and the others were all stunned by Yi Feng's answer, but thinking about the scene where he saved Neville before, they felt that there was nothing wrong with it. After all, Yi Feng was indeed very strong in this aspect, and could even be said to be a bit ridiculously strong. It's a bit incomprehensible. Wouldn't it be better to be simpler? Then maybe we Gryffindors can win the Quidditch Championship. Yi Feng did not answer Ronald's doubts, and the two parties separated after walking forward for a while. Although underachievers and overachievers can play together, there is still a bit of a generation gap between the two parties. For example, Ronald cannot study quietly after class like Yi Feng and others. Although Harry is not a bad student, he is not the kind to be quiet either. The kind that comes down. It's a pity that they didn't know that the place where Yi Feng and Hermione, study, was not a secluded garden. After the two left the classroom, they went straight out of the academy and didn't stop until they came to the edge of the Black Lake. After arriving at the edge of the Black Lake, Yi Feng took out a set of tables and chairs. Of course, it was a set but there were only two chairs. When Yi Feng took out the tables and chairs, Hermione easily pulled one of them open and sat down. Yi Feng skillfully took out his fishing rod, hung up the bait and threw it out before sitting down. Just like this, on the shore of the sparkling lake, a young man and woman sat quietly. The girl quietly looked through the books on the table, 
occasionally reaching out and stuffing the snacks on the table into her mouth, while the boy concentrated on staring at the fish float on the lake. Suddenly, the fish float on the lake suddenly sank. The fishing rod held by the young boy bent like a full moon the moment the fish float sank. The huge pulling force even pulled the boy sitting on the chair to lean forward suddenly. It's a big deal. Hermione, Sigma opening parenthesis DLLLL. Looking at the fishing rod that was almost stretched to a full moon, with a book in one hand and a handful of French fries in the other hand, Hermione's eyes widened in shock, even the French fries that had been stuffed into her pretty little mouth. I forgot to eat. It was not the first day that he followed Yi Feng to the lake for fishing, but for two consecutive days Yi Feng didn't catch even a single fry, let alone a big fish. This is why she will continue to follow Yi Feng here. After all, in Jing, there are not many good places to read in the shade and have snacks. Yi Feng, I feel offended. However, today Yi Feng actually opened for the first time, and even if Hermione didn't know how to fish, she could tell that the fish he caught was definitely not small. When Yi Feng stood up and pulled the fishing rod with excitement on his face, he followed the fish in the water. When the fish, fighted, and occasionally took two steps to change its position, Hermione, who was watching from behind, became excited and anxious. Woo! The sound of the fishing line being pulled rapidly through the air kept resounding, but Yi Feng relied on the powerful fishing rod in his hand that was not afraid of cutting the line to directly resist, forcing the big fish in the water to retreat continuously. As the big fish in the water was pulled out from the bottom little by little, waves suddenly rolled up on the water surface. Perhaps they sensed the danger. When they were about to come out of the water, the big fish in the water began to fight hard, and a huge force suddenly acted on the fishing rod. Above, the result of the big fish's explosion was that Yi Feng was dragged forward by nearly one meter. Yeah, let go. Seeing that Yi Feng was about to be dragged into the water, Hermione exclaimed and asked Yi Feng to let go of the fishing rod, but how could the fisherman take the initiative to let the fish run away? So Yi Feng naturally didn't let go. Seeing that Yi Feng didn't let go obediently, and seeing that he was about to be pulled forward again, Hermione became anxious. She rushed forward and hugged Yi Feng from behind, and hugged Yi Feng's waist before moving back. Pull. Hermione's idea was simple. Since Yi Feng was unwilling to let go and he couldn't hold the fish by himself, he could add her weight, right? Unfortunately, Hermione still underestimated the fish in the lake a little too much. Even if the two of them worked together, they were still slowly being pulled into the lake. Fortunately, the fish in the lake was not endurance enough, and they were only less than 10 meters away from the lake shore. At one meter, the force from the fishing rod gradually weakened. Yi Feng's eyes lit up when he found that the force on the fishing rod had weakened. He shouted, back off, and pulled the fishing rod back. Hermione was very smart. She understood what Yi Feng meant in an instant, so the two of them worked together to pull back. After half an hour, a huge fish head with a light blue color in the sun surfaced from the water. It's so big. No wonder Yi Feng exclaimed, because the head of the fish they pulled up was almost as big as the two of them. And when they pulled the big fish to the shore, Hermione was even more shocked and rosy. Mouth, and then looked at Yi Feng like a monster, because this fish was two meters long. Yi Feng was very happy to catch such a big fish, but he was also in trouble because the fish was really too big, and the kitchen utensils in his hands were not big enough to cut the fish apart. What should we do? We can't let the house elves in the kitchen handle it, otherwise Dumbledore will definitely take the opportunity to cause trouble again. Wait, Dumbledore, it seems that there is indeed a suitable, dissection knife, that can be used. In the middle of the murmur, Yi Feng's mind appeared in a shabby, broken hat, and this hat is now placed in Dumbledore's office. It was also at this time that the sorting hat in Dumbledore's office suddenly felt cold. I seem to feel a sense of malice in the dark. Could it be that Voldemort is coming back? But whatever, let Dumbledore have a headache. Headmaster Dumbledore, Headmaster Dumbledore, are you there? Headmaster Dumbledore, are you here? If you are, just say a word. If you don't say a word, I will go in. Squeak. Don't think wrongly, this squeak was not made by Dumbledore, but Yi Feng had already pushed open the door of Dumbledore's office while talking, and the sorting hat in the office and Dumbledore's pet fox, that is, the phoenix saw Yi Feng even if the wind came in, they would not notice it, because they had already become accustomed to it. 
Yi Feng was quite familiar with it, so he was not surprised when he saw a bird and hat making no sound. He just glanced at it and saw that Dumbledore was indeed not there, and then turned his attention to the sorting hat. Sorting hat. Sigma opening parenthesis D winking face. You. Dot why are you staring at me like this? I'm warning you. I'm a veteran of Hogwarts. Even Dumbledore has to be polite to me. Don't mess around. But is Yi Feng afraid of this? Not to mention it was just the sorting hat, but Dumbledore, too, didn't he just try to trick him when he should? So Yi Feng simply ignored the Sorting Hat's warning. Seeing that Yi Feng ignored his warning and still walked towards him, the Sorting Hat was frightened. He said in a panic, Hey, hey, Yi Feng, boy, I'm warning you, this is Dumbledore's office, I you are an indispensable veteran of Hogwarts. If anything happens to me, you will definitely be expelled. However, Yi Feng seemed to have not heard his words and still walked towards him. When he walked to the side of the Sorting Hat, he directly raised his hand to grab the sorting hat. Ah, it's time to kill the hat. Someone is going to kill the hat. Dumbledore, come quickly. Someone is going to kill the sorting hat, the hard-working sorting hat of Hogwarts. Yi Feng, D degree asterisk. Hearing the pitiful scream from the sorting hat and the black line on Yi Feng's head, he had to speed up his movements. Huh, as Yi Feng grabbed the sorting hat and put his hand inside the sorting hat's hat and pulled it out, a cold gleaming western style one-handed sword appeared in his hand. After pulling out the holy sword of Gryffindor, Yi Feng threw it away and threw the sorting hat back, who was still screaming. He raised the holy sword of Gryffindor in front of him and stretched out his other hand to lightly touch the sword. Bomb. Ding. A crisp buzzing sound sounded, and Yi Feng could clearly feel the bursts of joy coming from the holy sword. However, this holy sword did not have self-awareness similar to the sorting hat. Perhaps only it could be hidden in the sorting hat. Yi Feng didn't care as to why the sword was hidden in the sorting hat or who hid it inside. The only thing he cared about was whether the sword was sharp enough. Shua. With a casual flick of Yi Feng's hand, a piece of black hair appeared in the air. At this time, Yi Feng handed over the long sword in his hand, letting the hair fall freely on the sword's edge. The moment the hair fell on the sword blade, a sound that ordinary people couldn't hear sounded. Then the hair was divided into two parts very neatly, but before the two parts of hair fell to the ground, a wisp of green smoke appeared. Then he jumped up. Yi Feng has not forgotten that there is such a thing as a curse in this world, so his hair cannot be left casually. However, this sword can break off the hair that he chopped off so easily, achieving the effect of blowing hair and making a decisive decision. It was indeed a bit beyond Yi Feng's expectations. It's a good sword. It's worthy of being the sword worn by the founder of Gryffindor. I just don't know if it will be easy to use for a while. Yi Feng murmured, took the sword, turned around and walked out, and soon returned to the lake. Not long after Yi Feng left, Dumbledore suddenly appeared from the office. He glanced at the sorting hat, which had returned to normal as if nothing had happened, and murmured, is there an error in the prophecy? I didn't expect this little guy to be so relaxed. Then he pulled out the holy sword. It seems that I still underestimated this little guy, but how did he know that the holy sword was in the sorting hat? And, what did he want to do with the holy sword? With the slightest curiosity, Dumbledore also he followed the path Yi Feng took just now. Gryffindor's holy sword can be said to be related to prophecies and even the future of the wizarding world, but it is in Hogwarts Academy after all, and as long as he is in the Academy, Dumbledore is confident that there will be no accidents, so he will go all the way not fast. However, when he slowly followed Yi Feng's footsteps to the lake and saw what Yi Feng was doing with the holy sword, he really wanted to give his previous self a slap in the face, because Yi Feng was actually using it. Gryffindor's holy sword kills fish. That's Gryffindor's holy sword, the sword once worn by one of the four founders of Hogwarts. It can be said that this sword is considered a treasure in the entire wizarding world. Even Voldemort, who frightened the wizarding world, has been looking for it for who knows how long. But such a treasure that countless people desire is currently being killed by Yi Feng with one hand, and judging from Yi Feng's skillful movements, he should have been using it for a while and is completely familiar with it. Yi Feng. Yi Feng, who had already bled the two meter long fish, cut off its head and discarded the unwanted internal organs and was decomposing the fish, shivered in fright when he heard the angry shout because the sound was too loud for him. 
It's so familiar, he hears it every day these days. Oh ha, it's over. After hearing the voice, Yi Feng paused for a moment, then pretended to be calm and put the Gryffindor Holy Sword in his hand into the space ring. Then he turned his head and looked at Dumbledore with a bright smile and said loudly, Principal Dumbledore, why are you here? Look, this is the dinner ingredient I prepared for school night. Look at the texture of the fish. It's beautiful, right? It tastes absolutely delicious. Dumbledore almost laughed angrily when he heard Yi Feng's words, and he already knew Yi Feng very well. If he continued to follow his words, he would probably get confused by him, so he did not answer Yi Feng's words. Words of wind. Let's not talk about the fact that you went to the lake to fish privately again. Tell me, where did the sword in your hand just now come from? Hearing Dumbledore's words, Yi Feng felt a little guilty, because he already knew which sword it was when he took it, but he still took it out and used it, because in addition to the fairy sword given by the system sign in, he still had the remaining sword in his hand. The ones that came out were just ordinary knives. It's not that those knives were not sharp enough, but they were still not very handy after all because the fish was a bit too big, so he thought of using the sword that might be a holy sword to dissect the fish. Fish. Of course, although he understood what was going on, he couldn't really tell the truth, so he just said, I, picked up, this sword from a tattered hat. I saw that the sword is quite sharp, so I used it to kill fish. What's wrong, Headmaster Dumbledore, is there something wrong with this sword? Dumbledore, this is more than just a problem. This is a big problem. This is Gryffindor's holy sword. You actually use it to kill fish. That's what he thought, but Dumbledore could never say that, so he could only shake his head and said, There is nothing wrong with this sword, but you are only 11 years old and you can't hold such a dangerous weapon. Now, let's go ahead. Leave it to me for safekeeping, and as for the fish, I'll have the house elves come and take care of it. I was a little surprised to see that Dumbledore didn't use the topic to make use of Yi Feng. When Yi Feng saw that he had been busy for a long time but decomposed less than half of the big fish, he decisively took out the holy sword of Gryffindor and handed it to Dumbledore. Dumbledore was relieved to see Yi Feng handing the holy sword back to him without any knowledge, but when he smelled the strong fishy smell from the spotless sword, he instinctively frowned. Hi, I can't have this sword. It's not that I can't put it back in the sorting hat. It's definitely not that I don't think it's too fishy. It's just that I need to change it to a safer place. Yes, I need to change it to a safer place. Dumbledore left, and Yi Feng looked at the world and felt that time was almost up. He and Hermione cleaned up, washed their hands, cleaned up the fishy smell on their bodies, and walked back along the path back to the academy. Add Angelica Darica first, then Sanhua, cough, the Sichuan peppercorns and dried ginger need to be fried first. Well, I just happened to bring a small walk over. While frying the peppercorns and dried ginger, I smashed the purple kamong, amamam billosum, nutmeg, and cinnamon first. In a low voice, Yi Feng methodically processed one ingredient after another, which made Snape on the podium nod happily. The only drawback was that because the location was a bit close to him, the Sichuan peppercorns and dried ginger tasted a bit choking when fried. A few minutes later, Yi Feng mashed the fried Sichuan peppercorns and chili peppers, mixed with cloves, aniseed, fennel, woody incense, galangal, etc. into foam, and finally mixed them all with the previous purple komori, amamam villosum, etc. It smells so good, but classmate Yi Feng, what kind of potion did you make this time? Why is this potion in powder form? Is it meant to be sprinkled? Hearing Snape's words, Yi Feng hesitated for a moment, but finally decided to tell the truth. After all, Snape had promised him that as long as he could refine the potions he arranged, he could tinker with other ones, and he could choose at will within a certain range. Even with the magic potion, he can't burn the bridge. Professor Snape, the thing I refined, is called 13 incense. It is indeed used for spreading. Yi Feng did not lie. This thing is indeed used for spreading, but it is not used for attacking, but used for seasoning. Although the food at Hogwarts is quite good, Yi Feng still doesn't like British food. He still prefers Chinese food, so Yi Feng decided to open a small stove for himself. However, it is a pity that the ingredients used in cooking are also very different due to different eating habits, 
So Yi Feng had to tinker with various seasonings before cooking by himself, so he came up with the method of making in potions class. The 13 incense scene. At this moment, Snape didn't realize anything. After all, if I didn't tell you that it was a condiment, who could guess its use from the name Shisanchiang? Snape is like this now, so he asked me to refine a brand new potion. Then, oh, a brand new potion, can you tell me what this potion does? Yi Feng, E-M-M-M-M-M, remove mutton, enhance flavor, increase freshness, and add fragrance. Yi Feng also felt a little guilty when he mentioned the effects of 13 incense. After all, it was obvious at a glance that this effect was not something that a serious potion could achieve. Snape, N airy summation, backquote. What's the purpose? Can you, dot say it again? Snape had a question mark when he heard what Yi Feng said. It removes mutton, enhances flavor, adds freshness and fragrance. It is especially suitable for marinating mutton. I strongly recommend that the house elves in the kitchen add a little bit when cooking mutton and other meats with a fishy mutton smell. Gulu. Ronald, who was sitting on the other side of Yi Feng, looked at Snape, whose face darkened as soon as Yi Feng finished speaking. He couldn't help but swallowed, and his body instinctively shrank toward Harry and away from Yi Feng. Although he admitted that the condiments made by Yi Feng were delicious, he was already salivating a little just hearing about the effect of the 13 spices, but looking at Snape's face, he was afraid that Yi Feng would splash it after a while. His face was covered in blood, so he thought it would be better to stay away and be a little transparent. Are you sure this thing you are talking about is a magic potion? Yes, I'm sure. Snape's tone was already quite dangerous, but Yi Feng still gave a very positive answer. After all, he couldn't admit directly that this was just a seasoning, right? Hearing Yi Feng's answer, Snape laughed angrily. Seeing that Snape actually smiled, Yi Feng couldn't help but get hairy, and a layer of goosebumps visibly appeared on his arms. Very good, very good. Then tell me why your so-called 13 incense is called a potion. As a friendly reminder, if you can convince me or refute me, not only will I not blame you, but I will also give Gryffindor 10 points. In the future, you, you can also continue to make this, magic potion, in my classroom. But if you don't convince me, Snape didn't finish what he said, but judging from his expression, if Yi Feng really refused to convince him or if Snape couldn't find a reason to refute, then he might lose his skin. Although Yi Feng felt that he might be doomed this time, he still wanted to try harder, so he took a deep breath and said, Professor Snape, what is your definition of a magic potion? Snape wasn't quite sure why Yi Feng asked this question, but he still answered truthfully. A magic potion is a potion that is made by boiling various magic materials so that it can exert some strange effects. Note, potions are not only water-soluble. Potions, powders, pills, ointments, etc. can all be collectively referred to as potions. Yi Feng's eyes lit up when he heard Snape's answer, and he immediately said, since Professor Snape also said that a magic potion is a potion that is made by brewing various magic materials to produce some strange effects, then my 10 why can't 3 incense be a magic potion? Snape's eyes flashed slightly when he heard Yi Feng's rhetorical question. He knew that the little guy in front of him had caught the loophole in his previous sentence, so he directly added, the magic potion needs to work magic. No matter it is used it can be used for combat or treatment, but your 13 incense only removes the fishy smell from meat and is used as seasoning. I would like to ask Mr. Yi Feng, how can a condiment be called a magic potion? Even if its effect of removing fishy smell is indeed very strong, it is still just a condiment and not a real magic potion. No, no, Professor Snape, you cannot deny that it is a type of potion just because it can be used as a condiment. Why can't 13 incense be a magic potion? All the materials he uses are selected from the materials you gave, and I also used magic guidance during the refining process, and it does work when it works. With the participation of magic power, its ability to remove fishy smell is effective even if it is placed on magical animals. Whether it is the process of refining or the process of exerting its effect, these 13 incense are in line with Professor Snape's definition of a potion. So Professor Snape, I think the 13 incense I made is a potion. But I just used it as a seasoning. You can't deny that the potion called 13 fragrances is a potion just because I use it as a seasoning. This is wrong. Snape. Underscore. 
Although he was speechless, Snape had to say that Yi Feng's ability to quibble was indeed very strong. Not to mention, although he clearly knew that there must be something wrong with his retort, even he was still convinced by this set of rhetoric. There was some hesitation. In the end, Snape, who was not good at words and even less argumentative, had to admit Yi Feng's argument and admitted that the 13 incense he refined was one of the potions, and after obtaining Yi Feng's consent, he seriously copied the recipe into the potion formula collection. Although this was just an ordinary debate, his victory or defeat had an extremely profound impact on potion science, because since then, once the restrictions on potion types were opened, a large number of new ones emerged in a short period of time. Magic potion, and the leader among them is Yi Feng. Of course, during this process, Yi Feng also successfully made the school add several school rules. For example, you are not allowed to bring an alchemy furnace with a size of more than 50 centimeters to the potions classroom to make alchemy, and you are not allowed to cook hot pot base, especially spicy ones, in the potions classroom. Pot bottom ingredients and the like. The news that Yi Feng defeated Snape quickly spread throughout the academy like the wind. Zhang Chu from Ravenclaw was very happy when she heard the news, because her brother was good enough for her as her sister. Naturally, it is also a matter of honor. However, she almost choked on her own saliva when she heard that Yi Feng was arguing with Professor Snape about whether 13 incenses were potions. Others don't understand what 13 fragrances are, so how can she understand? After all, that thing had already appeared during the Northern Song Dynasty, and many different formulas were developed subsequently, so she still knew about this famous condiment. But Ji Gui knew that it was impossible for her to tell him. After all, he was her brother, and it was impossible for her to expose her brother. Oh, this guy was quite honest at home. I didn't expect that he would become so naughty after he came to school. It must be those guys from the Lion Academy who have led my brother to bad behavior. Fortunately, Zhang Chu said this from the bottom of his heart. If he really said this and was heard by others and spread to Gryffindor, then Harry and the others would definitely be aggrieved, because Yi Feng didn't need to be taught at all, or it could be said that he was a fearful person. The kind that doesn't cause chaos, it can be said that he is the most noisy among all Gryffindors. Yi Feng didn't know that Zhang Chu from Ravenclaw was extremely happy after hearing that he had defended Snape. After all, although they were on the same campus, they were in different grades and colleges, so it was difficult to find them without actively looking for them, met each other. What's more, Zhang Chu belongs to Ravenclaw, and Ravenclaw are all top students who love learning, so they don't run around. Fortunately, Yi Feng has not forgotten his sister. After successfully making the 13 incense, Yi Feng didn't just keep it for himself. He immediately went to the kitchen to try it out. He found that the effect of removing fishy smell and adding fragrance was quite good, so he just started using it himself. The condiments made a great meal. When Harry and the others saw the dishes that Yi Feng brought out were made by the house elves of the college, they were not even the same as the dishes that Yi Feng brought out before, but they tasted more attractive and looked better, even the always rational Hermione couldn't help but swallow. Yi Feng, I love you to death. Ronald, who had been aroused by Snape's potions class as early as possible, couldn't help it anymore. He cheered and jumped towards the potion that Yi Feng put on the table dishes, but the next second he screamed and retracted his hand. How many times have I told you? If you want to eat my food, you can't be in a hurry, and you can't just take it with your hands. I've already sat down. After hearing what Yi Feng said, Ronald touched the back of his somewhat red hands, but for the sake of the delicious food in front of him, he sat back obediently and picked up the knife and fork in front of him, but he was stunned the next second because he found that the knives and forks that used to be so easy to use didn't seem to be very useful now. Seeing Ronald clumsily using a fork to pick up a piece of sweet and sour pork ribs, Yi Feng almost couldn't help laughing. That thing was sweet and sour pork ribs. Although there was a layer of batter hanging on the outside, it looked like a piece of boneless meat. It is indeed a piece of ribs, so if you want to use a fork to fork it, it is not much different from using a fork to fork a stone. Seeing Ronald wanting to eat but unable to fork it, Yi Feng looked anxious but did not remind him. Instead, he nodded towards Hermione and Harry, and then pulled Neville, who was sitting on the other side of Ronald and was swallowing his saliva, to sit in his seat and turned around. Walked towards Ravenclaw. 
Although the cafeteria of Hogwarts does not clearly delineate which area is the dining area of which house, due to personality or habits, people from the same house will basically sit together to eat, and there will rarely or even not be mixed together. Case. Therefore, when Yi Feng left Gryffindor's dining area and walked towards Ravenclaw's dining area, not only Harry and the others put down their knives and forks and looked at him with puzzled faces, but also the students from other colleges also stopped their hands. Action looked at him. Faced with everyone's gaze, Yi Feng didn't care at all. He still walked forward steadily, and finally stopped next to a girl who was about the same age as him, with delicate appearance and the same skin color as him. Everyone else stopped. Zhang Chu was no exception, and when she saw Yi Feng coming this way, she already knew that Yi Feng must have come to see her, but Yi Feng actually came here at this time. Looking for her made her heart beat fast. Although she was so nervous that her heart was pounding, Zhang Chu did not suffer from stage fright. She said softly, Why are you here? Do you need help with anything? Hearing Zhang Chu's words, Yi Feng said that he was not touched. It would be a lie. After all, he had never enjoyed the care of his sister in this life or the previous life. Therefore, when Zhang Chu saw him coming over, the first thing he thought of was that he was Yi Feng was quite moved when there was no need for her help. But it's a pity that Zhang Chu guessed wrong. Yi Feng really couldn't think of anything that he needed help from others at Hogwarts. And the reason why he came here at this time was naturally because he made a sumptuous meal. Dinner is going to be shared with her. Therefore, Yi Feng shook his head and looked at the girl next to Zhang Chu who could score 90% in appearance but only 70% in figure nonsense. He is not a Duluo, what kind of figure can a 12-year-old girl have? Very gentleman he said. This beautiful lady, could you please sit a little to the side? Yi Feng's name is well known in Hogwarts, and European and American girls are relatively precocious, both physically and mentally. Therefore, when Yi Feng said this, the girl not only did not get angry, but moved to the side with excitement on her face. He moved a little, and his desire to read gossip and watch the excitement was completely reflected on his face. In fact, it's not just this girl, other people looking here also have the same mentality. Even Dumbledore, who is sitting at the top and dining, slightly raised the corners of his mouth as if to watch the fun. The only difference is probably that he is sitting there. Hermione was in the Gryffindor dining area. Although Hermione still had a watchful expression on her face at this moment, if you look carefully, you can see that the smile on her face is a little forced, and the little hands placed under the table are even more entangled, and my fingertips turned white because I worked too hard. And in the midst of everyone's attention, Yi Feng took away the food in front of Zhang Chu with a wave of his hand, and then released a lot of steaming and fragrant dishes from the space ring with a wave of his hand. I made it myself, and I don't know if it tastes to your liking. Oh, when Yi Feng said this, the whole restaurant was boiling. The girls looked at Zhang Chu with envy, especially the Gryffindor girls, because some of them had not only smelled the food made by Yi Feng, some of them I've even had the pleasure of tasting. Facing the many calls and the faint words of, together, even Yi Feng couldn't help but blush. Before putting the chopsticks he had just made on the table, he left a sentence, you eat first, if you like it, if you say that, I will make it for you every day from now on, then he ran away. As Yi Feng ran back to the Gryffindor dining area, there were boos from behind him. In fact, Yi Feng was not afraid of the boos. He was afraid that these people would misunderstand the booing and would really not be able to stand down until then, so he ran away decisively. When he returned to the Gryffindor table, he found that Harry and the others still hadn't been able to eat the food. While the food was being served, he squeezed in next to Hermione and sat down and said, don't just wait and eat. You don't know how to eat it, do you? Okay, watch it, I'm only going to teach you once. After saying that, Yi Feng turned around and reached into the inside of Hermione's wizard robe to take out her wand. Then he took out his wand and rubbed them together on the table, then used them as chopsticks to pick up a piece of steaming braised pork ribs. Have you learned? This is how you eat Chinese food. Knives and forks don't work in Chinese food. You have to use chopsticks. However, today I forgot to get two more pairs of chopsticks, so I just used a wand to make do. Anyway, it's pretty much the same. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support my channel.